A lot of people, YouTubers and filmmakers saying Sony's 16-35mm f2.8 G Master is a vlog king. But it's over $2,000. I know. Is it worth? Is it for you? So let's start today's the gears. Okay. How's it good people? Welcome back to another new episode of The Gears and thank you for tuning in again. So first, if you haven't watched the short film that I posted last time, go watch it because most of the footages except, you know, drones and uh, you know, flashback scenes were shot on Sony 16-35mm f2.8 G Master, which I'll talk about today. You know, it'll help you to understand this lens ability more. So go and welcome back. So now I hope you guys are ready for, you know, deep diving into Sony 16-35mm f2.8 G Master. So as always, I'm going to focus on three major things, the build quality, autofocus, and image quality. So let's start off with build quality. First, I really, really appreciate appreciated the size and weight. Although it's 16 to 35 mil, you know, ultra wide to medium focal length and f2.8, it weighs 680 grams. And the size is not that big. It looks like, you know, 24 to 70 mil f2.8 G Master, but it's more smaller and shorter than that. Anyway, this time I brought this line to hiking. It was like five to six hours hiking, I believe. And I used this bag. I don't know how to call it English, but uh, you know, the bag on like stomach what is this and i put the camera and the lens in that but it fits perfectly i didn't feel the heaviness and it didn't you know bother me at all so the portability you know mobility is awesome like wherever you going just put the camera in your back and don't miss the chance so this size and weight is so huge point and the actual build quality the structure is you know solid as always the surface is very satisfying. I think, you know, it's not a metal, but it feels like, you know, the light, but the solid material. And those rings are a little bit heavy, you know, but good one. Like it resists to fall down easily. Overall, this lens is very simple. It has AF, MF control switch and one focus hold. Very, you know, minimalistic. I love it. Also, this water resistance rubber thing is actually nice. It connects to the camera body very strong, which blocks the water you know, from coming in. Personally, this weather sitting stuff is very huge to me. For that, G Master is always reliable. So the portability, mobility, the structure, and the quality are awesome. So from next, we gotta deep dive into the actual ability of this lens. Okay, next is autofocus. Well, there are both of good and bad size for this. But first, autofocus speed was 0.6 second average at 16 mil and 0.7 second average at 35 mil. Well, it's pretty fast. Also, the motion, like how it focuses on the face is very fast, like very quick motion. Also, face tracking is very well. So I think this autofocus is so useful for vlogging, but also those can be bad size. I use this lens at mountain where there are many distractions around the main object. And also I was making a short film by myself alone. So I had to do the focus by myself. And if I have to shoot myself, you know, I, I have to use autofocus sometimes you know, like this scene you know can you see the focus is going you know, forward and back very quickly so many times because the focus speed is very fast when the focus is missing that motion will be you know fast and big so you know noticeable which might spoil the scene especially when you use it for in you know, a good scene like this also when I came in the frame from you know out of focus the focus motion was you know so big too weird. That's why I had to cut this part of this footage for short film. But overall, this you know autofocus ability is good. It's pretty fast and accurate most of the time. Face tracking is good for vlogging. It'll help you a lot. Okay, last one is image quality. So first, this lens covers from 60 mil the ultra wide to 35 mil like medium focal range. But before, I didn't like you know the wide lens, something like 60 mil. 20 mil. I was more like, you know, to the full guy, like 100 or 200 mil. But after using this lens, now I'm in love wide angle. First of all, it's so handy, like when you want to shoot a you know, driving scene, you just set 60 mil and grab it, and of course, you know, focus on driving. But you can get a nice footage, you know, you don't have to care the frame, the composition, you know, because 60 mil can shoot, you know, pretty much everything. You know, you just hold the camera, and pretty much it. 
definitely you are in the frame. Also, when you walk and vlog, just use 60 mil and done. When you don't have time to you know, care about the composition and the framing, 60 mil is a hero. It shoots pretty much everything you, know, you expect. And of course, the dynamic, this is what you can get. And I think this 60 mil, the ultra wide, is not that weird. But definitely, it's obvious, but not strange curved image or vignette as I used. You know, the image is so you know powerful, strong, and you know, a lot of information. You know that you can tell your audience. Yeah. I changed my mind. Now I think that you know wide angle is pretty much necessary for you know storytelling. Also, this lens goes to 35mm. So when you use 35mm and f2.8, you can get a nice cinematic depth of field. Also, minimum focus distance is 28 centimeters, which allows you to zoom in very well and you can get a detailed shot. But uh, this lens doesn't have image stabilization, so sometimes the footage gets kind of shaky. About this, the f4 version might be better. Okay, next one is sharpness. Well, I wouldn't say this is the sharpest E-mount lens, but definitely it's sharp, of course. What I like about this lens is the ability to, you know, catch the detail and texture. When you use it for landscape, the trees, rocks, plants, clouds, you know, details of those things are well captured. We can see every single detail in the footages. Also, they're not too sharp, but very clean, you know, very good balance. And when you use it for, you know, cityscape, the texture and the line of buildings are so detailed, and it's so good for, you know, when it's high contrast and dark situations. You know, very wide dynamic range. You know, important thing is not the sharpness, it's the balance. You know, good balance. G Master has always good balance. And about color, it's so natural for both a video and photo. If the real object has a plenty of you know, rich colors, the footage will be so. Especially at this season, mountain has a, you know many beautiful colors, red, orange, green, yellow. So this lens is so good at you know, capture those, but it's not exaggerating, very true to you know, life colors. Well, this might be related to the sharpness, but colors are so detailed. You know, they are very sensitive, so clean, but obvious. You know what I mean? So what is your favorite one? Just, you know, timestamp below. Okay, so conclusion is considering all aspects of this lens. I don't know. Just, just hear me out. You know what? This lens is pretty, pretty awesome. You know, amazingly detailed image and, uh, you know, good texture and uh, the natural depiction and the true to real life colors. The build quality is simple, but light and small. Autofocus, oh well, yeah, good. But it's over $2,000. You know what? There is F4 version, like much lighter, smaller. And uh, it's about $1,300 almost half price of G Master. And welcome to the ASMR uh, lens review. Yeah, seriously, you know, half price of G Master, much smaller and lighter. The F4 version has image stabilization in lens. I'm so curious about it. You know what, when I hear those, I can't help but thinking that F4 version is what you buy. Recently, I'm seriously thinking how I can reduce the, you know, the weight of backpack. So if the F4 version is smaller, lighter, and uh, cheaper, and the uh, image quality is still awesome, even if, you know, it's less than G Master, you know, I will pick F4. You know, I haven't used it before, but at this point, 1635mm F2.8 G Master is not necessary vlog king, and also it's not for me right now but trying is more than you know sharing so definitely i will make the episode about it f4 version you know i'm seriously thinking the purchase of you know wide angle zoom lens so let's say tune in for my final answer for my final conclusion you know in my head view too and speaking of lightweight i got i got this thing in my hand what is this it's tamron yeah it's Tamron 28-75mm f2.8. It's very popular and famous, you know, lens. But it's G2. Focus, come on. It's G2. Huh, the G2. 
the new model of 28275mm generation 2 the new generation of Tamron is coming soon so also stay tuned in for this okay this is it if you have any questions about this lens don't hate to leave the comment below you know this time i reviewed the 1635 g master because it was the you know, most requested so if you you know if you want to review of some lens that you're you know interested in just comment below okay today's topic is pretty much it and thank you for watching this video if you like this one show me your thumb and uh, hit the subscribe and i'll see you in the next episode okay go 16、35ね。いや、あの、個人的にめちゃめちゃ欲しくて考えてるんですよ。うん。やっぱりワイドもっと着たいなっていうので、まあ、G マスター試したんだけど、ぶっちゃけ言うと F4のあれ台数だよね